So hi everyone, you can see we're back here today on how to make a bow. So first off, the supplies that you'll need is a hot glue gun. You can use just some normal glue, anything that is a nice adhesive. Also, I will say go and check out the previous video. I do show the supplies that I have bought. This is a previous bow that I have made with the hinge mechanism using some simple handcuffs and also the ball launchers that I will show. It opens and closes very nicely. So first off you'll need the ball launchers, these are just supplies used for your dogs when you're taking them out and to throw a ball, pick it up and catch it for them. And also you will need some string from a local craft shop, this was 75 pence for 3 meters. Also the ball launchers were £1 each, okay, from my local discount store, you can try and look that up in a pet shop if you want. You will need a saw and a small hacksaw. I would say if you are underage, please use some supervision for this or get someone to do this. The hacksaw is preferably what is best to cut this with. It is small, gets into those nice cuts. Also what you'll need is maybe some duct tape or an extra adhesive if you want for more security. I got this for £1 for four rolls guys. It is all up to you. All in all you would need $4 to £4 to make this whole bow and craft world you can use or look up some string on old bags or old clothing but right here now I just start to cut off the tennis ball on the ball launcher these things for one pound they are a good good buy they have a slight bend at the top that is used to throw the ball a good distance but again you can see I tried to use the saw and it is terrible the saw the hacksaw uses really really well once you go fast with it it heats up and cuts through that plastic like butter snap off the tennis ball at the top and you have one half of your bow base already. So this is gonna be the base for your bow. I say again, it has a nice bend here at the top for when you are drawing back or pulling back your bow. It will give it that nice elasticated shoot. So again, just do the same with the other side of the bow or the ball launcher. Cut off that tennis ball here and use supervision if you need to guys. You can see you have the two halves of what makes your bow body base. Yes, that's a good name, a bow body base. They also have some nice hand grips. So this is going to be the hinge mechanism that we're going to use. It is a simple compass from a one pound math set. Okay, so if you have compasses at home, I would say use two of these. Or if you are going to buy them, use two and put one at each set, two at each side. So you can see here there is a hollowed out point in the handle of the ball launcher itself. And this is where the compass is going to simply be placed into. It makes it look like it's one unison piece. All goes aesthetically together. We are just going to put this compass in here and it will have a nice open and close mechanism. So at the bottom I just need to cut out and mark off what width the compass is and I use a tiny uh, Stanley knife right here to mark the width of the compass. So you'll just see I mark out how wide it is, get some chalk, mark it off to make sure I can see where I'm cutting and that is just going to slide in once I cut this portion out. So using the hacksaw I slightly cut down halfway into the handle itself through the thick plastic and I start to make multiple cuts into where I want to cut it. Okay, so just keep cutting into the sections, keep making multiple cuts down into where you want to go. The more cuts, the easier it will be to just pull it out. You can use a pair of pliers to place it into all the cuts. I cut down diagonally, as you can see here, I just start to cut down in diagonally into the plastic itself and all the little pieces will just fall out. I use a Stanley blade to slightly cut out and hollow out what portions I want. You can just see now the compass will just slide straight into where I have just cut out all of this plastic guys. The handle is really really hard to do. This is a lengthy process. Just start to keep cutting away with the hacksaw. I will say again it's preferably to use a hacksaw or a pair of pliers. But this just snaps right in after using the Stanley blade. Cutting in all those tiny tiny pieces of plastic. I'm a perfectionist guys. I just want this to go in perfect. I will say again use two compasses. Okay, so if you place one compass at one side, place the other at the other side, you will have maximum security when opening and closing your bow. <coughs> Talking is very bad. But you can just see here now I've hollowed out the middle of the handle and the compass just slides in like that. It is a perfect fit in this hollowed out handle. You can just see it open and closes right now, like so. So you can see where I'm going with this if I just do the same for the other half of the handle. It will just slide in and open and close for my bow.
So I will say again guys, please use two compasses or you can use a metal compass from a real professional math set. You can place one at each side and that will give you maximum strength when opening and closing your bow. But I've just plugged in the glue gun there. Mark out the same width that I've cut on one other side. You can see I mark it out with chalk again. Always be marking out your sizes and where you will want to cut. You will never want to make a wrong cut. I've done it so many times and ruined some props. But again, just do the same as on the other side. Cut down into where you want to cut. Make multiple slight slits into the plastic itself. So the more slits and cuts that you make into where you want the space that you want to cut out, the easier it will be to pull out. Okay, so once you either cut down diagonally or use maybe a Stanley blade to slightly go across the bottom, or you can use a pair of pliers to pull out this plastic. This is a very lengthy process and takes some time. You can see I've sped up the process. But I try and find multiple and easy ways. Do not try and cut towards yourself in any way. Please, I will say that, do never push the blade or pull the blade towards yourself. Always be cutting outward, never inward. All right, that's just some geeky tips right there and safety tips. I don't want anyone cutting themselves, but I use the Stanley blade to slightly cut out the plastic that I want and start to use the hacksaw to get all those little nooks and crannies. The hollowed out plastic handle is really really good for this compass, you can see it just slides in perfectly on one side. And I will just use the glue gun then to glue both halves together. So you can see the space slightly here on one half, and once I get the other half, I think, yep, you can see both halves right there that the compass will just be going into. I will say again you can do the same on the other side. So two compasses will give you maximum security when opening and closing your bow. Also when drawing back your bow, it may not snap. So you can see both sides place into both of the ball launchers like so, using a simple compass and one pound dog treats. Okay, so this is just used for your dog to throw the ball when taking it a walk. And now I've turned it into a nice little green arrow bow or a Prometheus bow. So I just take the glue gun right now, make sure the glue is heated up and then I just start to place it in the hollowed out handle. So I just start to place it up and down where I am placing the compass into and I just, not too much glue guys, too much glue if you have never heard is worse than not enough glue. So you'll just want to place a slight amount of glue at first. If you put too much glue it may take too, too much time to dry or it may not stick too well. A slight amount of glue is always good and then you can wrap it up in sellotape or go over it in some glue afterwards. You can see here I start to fill up out the hollowed out handle. So I just fill the hollowed out handle and all those little spaces and nooks and crannies around the compass itself. I fill that up with some hot glue. It takes a long time. I blow on it sometimes just to help it cool down. Once you give your glue some cool down period, it is about a minute to two minutes you will be per uh, it will be perfectly safe it is like a heated plastic or you can just use some normal yoohoo glue anything that is a nice adhesive after this well, we will be using the duct tape to give this extra strength to stick to it okay so you'll see the final results guys and here we are with the video So I will always say this guys, watch a movie, listen to some music, it will help pass the time and also maybe keep you inspired, maybe watch some RO Season 5, it will keep you inspired for making a bow or making your Prometheus suit, always keep going alright, It's some of this time it can get very relentless, these long builds can really really take their time, in the end always think about the end result and it's always better, okay, just some inspiration for you guys, here you can see now I have my open and close mechanism bow. Okay, I've let the glue dry, it just open and closes like that. And the next portion will be on how to make your bow string. Alright, but you can just see here right now, it open and closes and all the glue is in the nooks and crannies of the hollowed out handle. But the compass is perfect, it open and closes, has that nice hinge mechanism. And I will say on the other side, please place maybe a compass in that. Alright guys, but here I've just taped up one side with the duct tape. And this has given it some extra strength and security. And it covers up also all those glue marks and also that blue compass look. So I just take the duct tape that I got for one pound at my local discount store. I got four rolls for one pound, which is really good. 
It is really, really good strength duct tape. And I just keep wrapping this round multiple times. One layer is not enough. I at least do it five to six layers, do it multiple portions, and places where I know it will have some tension or it will be pulling on the compass or the plastic, I start to wrap it around like here at the bottom. I wrap this around multiple times. Okay, so at the top and bottom, it makes it go much better. It makes it like it's one in unison. And this bone eye open and closes like so. You can cut off that little nib at the top. I think it gives it that nice, better look here for the compass, but it has also a nice handle portion for gripping and also holding, drawing back your bow. Maybe look out for that when you're looking for these ball launchers, but in the middle also, we are going to be doing the bowstring now. So guys, for your bowstring, I bought some from my local art shop, 75 pence for three meters. You may only need around one meter. You can find that on old bags, old clothing. I will say the thicker the string, the better the drawback of the bow. But here I just mark out the length of my bow itself from top to bottom. Make sure the string is nice and tight and it is taut for a good drawback of your bow. But again, I will say give yourself some room at the top and bottom. Do not cut off exactly the same size of your bow. Leave some space at the top and bottom of the string for where you're going to tie it off. Okay, so here at the top, I just make the hacksaw cut in slightly in the middle, a tiny cut. Okay, so this tiny cut is going to be the area where the string is going to be placed into and it'll give a nice place and hold into the bow string itself. All right, so I take the bottom and I, again, I take the saw blade and just cut into it. This tiny little slit is just going to be where the string will sit, give it a nice tightness when open and also I will be placing over some hot glue and tape to give it that nice strength and extra security. You can tie yours around the top and bottom, you can get a hot nail, place it through the plastic like I did the first time but that was really time consuming and dangerous. I will say just maybe make a tiny cut at the top and bottom like I've done now and just slightly slide in the string to those tiny places. Okay, so you can just see now once I show it to the camera, it holds it in nice and tight. Then I take the hot glue gun and then just place the hot glue all in and around the top where the string is. Okay, so after I place it in at the bottom again like so, you can see I take the glue gun and just place the glue on the string and on the bow itself. Not too much glue, I don't lather it all up, I just place a slight amount of glue so that it will hold and wait for the cool down period, about a minute to a minute and a half. And then I take some grip tape and I wrap the grip tape around it. Multiple times I will actually wrap this grip tape around it to give it extra strength. I take some elasticated straps also and that strengthens it up. Multiple, multiple and various things go into really, really securing these pieces in this bowstring on. A tiny bit of glue will not do it guys. You will have to really secure these things on. As you can see now with the grip tape, I wrap it around. So if you really want a good drawback and a good pull of the bow itself, secure up the bowstring and the body of the bow itself you will have a perfect flip open bow okay but you can see now the process of what i do just wrap around the grip tape multiple times you can use any tape you want any glue you want as long as it a good is uh, is a good adhesive i've done this multiple times it hurts just talking <laughs> so you can see here i actually tie it off so this end i tie it off because i left enough room of the string itself for it to be tied off so again, from the start, you will want to give yourself enough room at the top and bottom so you maybe can tie it off. It gives that extra bit of strength when putting it on. I actually glue the nut on the tie off. Then I get the grip tape and I wrap it around. So guys, here is the finished product. Once I finish, and here we are with the bow. So here guys you can see both ends are secured up with grip tape and glue. So when I pull the bow open the string actually goes tight and taut. You can actually see that right there everything just strengthens up and has a nice drawback and pullback okay. You can see the string actually goes right into the center and when I pull it back 
it goes into place okay so my palm is the actual thing holding the bow open you can see once i take my palm away the bow tries to pull into the center that is why the first time i actually had the handcuffs the handcuffs had a locking mechanism so if you can maybe find a hinge mechanism that has a lock portion also that will be suitable for the bow altogether but here is me talking some sort of bullshit next and thank you so much for watching guys so hi everyone you just see me create my bow and i will show you the final result right now well not the final result but you can see it closed like so it just closes and has that nice curve once you open it up like that just place your thumb and your palm right in the middle and it should stay open i love the bend that it has it has this nice curve on each side but i will say again as i said in the video I would place a extra compass right in here along with this so if you are going to buy this or try and make this and you are going to buy a math set so the compass that I got this in was this kind of math set right here this cost me one pound in a discount store in Poundland and I would say buy two of those or if you can find a math pack with one or two compasses in it maybe metal ones I would suggest those they would be much more structured and stronger but that is a suggestion that I should have got a metal compass. Anyway, we get in the middle here. I would suggest putting two of those for extra security so that when your bow opens, it may just not shake as much. This one is actually perfect. It has a nice shape. It has a thin width from the bow to the string itself or from the string to the bow, should I say. And I'll let you hear it. Okay, so you can hear that thwip or the thwing or the twing, shall we say, the twang. Okay, it's a nice twang from the bow. I'll step back, let you see it bend. So you can see each side bend. All right, one here and one here. They both just bend back like that. And you just place your arrow and you would shoot it. Now, I wouldn't, this isn't going to go high velocities or much speeds, but it will get a good distance. It may actually get a good speed as well if you do make it sort of structurally good if you make this thing very very structured like I did use some good tape use the glue place it all in the right places if you use two of these compasses your bow will be very very structured so the camera cut out per usual but as I was saying buy two of those compasses or try and get two or a metal pair of them place those in the middle and cut your sections out glue and secure those in and you will have a nice structured bow again guys these are perfect for prometheus arrow green arrow uh really really comic book studs red arrow artemis any kind of archer that you want robin hood hawkeye you could maybe place some circular pieces or props then maybe put multiple strings so that it looks like a hunter's bow something like that maybe put some details like a laser pointer put some things in and around like this as i will show you you could put so one like this that i've made this was made exactly from the ball launcher so this is the tag right here they are ball launchers chase and chew ball launcher those are for your dogs this is made from a yellow much thicker durable plastic than the ones that i'm using right now you can see the difference in thickness right here so if you just put those side by side the yellow one is much thicker than the black one this thin black one those are good but this really really durable yellow plastic one has done me very very well i will say again you can actually put the ends different designs so here we actually have an elongated top and bottom they kind of extend out more so you, it actually has more width from the bow to the string itself or from the string to the bow i made that mistake again but you can see the bigger gap right here that allows for more arrow pullback and the drawback of the bow it allows you for more space also within it but you can just see with the top up here that extends out and also with the bottom they both extend out and right here bends it is a very very durable bow hello you can also actually i'll shoot jonathan martinez you should do more of these videos it's very interesting i will do more of the cosplay supplies john or jonathan thank you for commenting mate but you can see right here i actually have a gap going in the middle of my bow like so so this is actually where the arrow will be placed in the middle and the string will align with the bow. So the target that you are shooting at or whatever, the arrow will go into the middle and align up with the string and everything shall shoot, go straight. Okay guys, that is just a little feature that you will want if you put a piece of plastic, maybe a piece 
or three pieces of cardboard wrapped in grip tape something that is very very durable you'll want to make that stick on really tight so I would say secure that up pretty much with some fabric that I wrapped around I secured it with some duct tape I secured it with much more glue this thing is going to be on pretty tight again down the bottom it is the th other half of the thicker dog launcher or the ball launcher the string is still the same on it and I would say maybe design up the bottom and top differently. This thing is very durable and I love it. One of my first bows that I have ever made. And then we go to the green arrow one that I have, the flip open bow. This is made from a pair of handcuffs here and another pair here. So one and two pairs just on each side. As I say, this is much more durable. It's much more strengthened and this thing just flicks open like that and it's it's, it's a really good bow. I love how it looks. It is just a bit small for me. So yeah, I may be giving this away in the giveaway, guys. You never know. But I will say this is a much smaller elongated bottom right here. It has a slightly smaller gap from the string to the bow itself than the other previous yellow one. But you just place your thumb in the middle, your palm right here where the handcuff keyhole goes, and you can pull back on the string, and you can hear the twang or the thwip of the string itself now this thing is pretty good and guys I'm really getting hurt really bad from doing this I've recorded this video at least three times so this looks really bad this looks like something that is not something uh, right here right now you can see just the teeth kind of going through the handcuffs right here if this is a route that you want to go down they tighten in right there and there is a button right here on the inside that I just pull on and they come out okay so without hitting that button these things are locked in place and you cannot open it until you press that and they just open up. It is a really, really good mechanism. Uh, I would suggest if you want to go this route, maybe find some smaller hinge mechanisms, find a tinier handcuff altogether, but one on each side really, really strengthens and secures it up for any and all bows. Just think about that, guys, when you're creating it. Again, I will say I'm going to put another compass in and around the middle here to strengthen this bow up. I'm going to put a couple more strings, design this up a lot, lot better. You're going to see this, trust me, in a finished product. But it is a pretty much functional working bow right now. You can design this up on a base for whatever you want. And, okay, you can hear this. I love that, the new, big thwip of a new bow. Okay, and I'll just let you hear the yellow one. Okay, so you can hear this kind of difference. But all you need is what are two of these, something similar to this. Cut off the top where the tennis ball used to go, like so. Okay, so that's the way it used to look. Glue or put a hinge piece and secure it right here in the middle of both of those. And then get some nice string from an art or craft store. Or if you can find some really stretchy string on some old clothing or bags, I would suggest using that. Thank you so much for watching guys, use your initiative, always let your geek speak for me, everyone here at Ireland, I've been trying to show you how to make a bow, and yeah, I hope I've helped. Love you guys, please subscribe and comment and like the video if you liked, otherwise, see you later.